Hey everyone, thanks for listening to the Seriously Social podcast, where we bring you behind the scenes of some of the world's largest companies and brands, and we explore their social media strategy. My name is Keith, and I'm the CEO of Socialian, a social media agency that works with medium sized and large businesses, uh, and we help brands with their social strategy, original content production, ad management, and more. Today, we have a very special guest, Elena Sharp, Elena is the social media director for the Church of the Highlands. And for those of you who don't know, Church of the Highlands is a non-denominational Christian multi-site megachurch headquartered in Birmingham, Alabama. It is the largest congregation in Alabama and the second largest church in the United States uh, as of 2018. Elena, thank you so much for being on our show today. Did I get all of that correct? Yeah, hey Keith, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here, and yeah, all of that was correct. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I want to start our conversation um, by asking you to tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you get into the world of social media? How long have you been working in it? Uh, maybe if you can just kind of talk through your journey of how you got to the point where you are today. Yeah, for sure. Probably not your average journey of how you end up in marketing or the social media world. <laughs> um, but so I started going to Church of the Highlands around 11 years ago and ended up um, having God call me to full time ministry. And so I went to our ministry school nice. and I actually studied worship ministry and worked with our worship department for a couple years and kind of ended up falling into my lap. Um, for me to help with their social media platform, our Highlands Worship platform. So I actually only did that for a few months before then I ended up switching over to our creative team where I worked for a couple years in print and like design project management, those types of things. Gotcha. And then actually probably a year ago, almost to the day, switched over to our social media team, which is within the creative team as our social media director and Learning every day since, <laughs> for sure. Heard that. Um, so you've really been in just the realm of marketing since the start of your career. Um, in some way. And mostly I would say it's been since I switched to the creative team, which has been almost three years. Got it. Yeah. And when you went to the ministry school, what, um, what was your original idea? What were you thinking when you went there first? Yeah, I have to say I did not have like a completely set plan <laughs> by any means. It was just gotcha. taking it one step at a time of what I knew God was calling me to do. But yeah, I studied worship ministry and um, loved leading worship and was originally like pursuing that path. And then, you know, other doors ended up opening up where I was really interested in them and um, gotcha. with experience. And so, yeah, that's kind of how I ended up here. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, later in our conversation, I do want to touch on the ministry school and the different uh, departments, I guess, within it um, and how all of that bakes into kind of the holistic strategy. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what your day to day at Church of the Highlands looks like? Yeah, so our day to day at Highlands definitely varies from day to day, but overall kind of like our daily goals is of course working on what content we're going to be getting out and trying to stay ahead on that um yep. so that of course includes content for sundays and any other messages that we have going on that week whether it's the first wednesday or um, student service yeah um, things and then any other events we have going on like for example this friday we have our girls night that's happening and then any other content, including like testimonies, um, stories of just what God's doing through our church or outreach stories, like right now, how we're helping serve with Hurricane Sally, um, disaster right. response, and those types of things. And then a big part of our everyday is our engagement and making sure that we're connecting to people and following up with questions and um, prayer requests and, you know, just general engagement of likes and going yeah. through our and all that um and then of course just like vision and strategy of like how can we continue being innovative and like pushing the pushing the button on where we're going with our social media and like how can we get more people involved and engaged so gotcha 
So it's, it sounds like you guys have a lot going on. How do you keep up with everything that Highlands is doing? Because I know it's just so much. You guys have multiple campuses. How do you keep up as a social media director with everything that's going on? Do you guys have like a weekly team meeting? Uh, it's just, it's, it's impressive to me. How do you, how do you keep up with everything? <laughs> hey, we could definitely be better. And it's, Sometimes we're all, you know, juggling a lot of balls. I'm sure you feel the same way. So definitely so thankful for our social media team. I have three people on our team right now um, who are full-time staff members. And then we do have some volunteers who help us out as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have a weekly team meeting on Mondays with our socials team just to talk about like what's on the calendar. Got it. And that meeting is not just like logistics. We also love to be really collaborative with ideas of like, how can we promote from anything from like just the weekly Sunday to how can we promote the big things that are coming up. And then um, we try to stay connected with like what's happening at our other campuses really through social media and seeing like what their campus pastors and like team members are posting story wise. And then, of course, reaching out to them like via email, Slack, that sort of thing. So yeah, well, that's what was actually my next question is, do you mind sharing some of the tools that you guys use? So you mentioned Slack. Is there anything else to help keep all of the teams and all the different campuses all on one page? Yeah, we love Slack. We also love Monday.com. Okay. <laughs> it's been our favorite project management tool that we've used so far, just because they're so many like innovative features and and Lindsay who works on my team is our project manager she that's where she inputs all the information for our graphic designer and content Got creators it. they can have all the details and execute that and then of course we use for our social for publishing and engagement analytics and those sorts of things got it got it awesome um okay so switching conversations a little bit here how does Highlands measure success from social media? So it's obviously a lot different than an e-commerce brand. So what metrics are you guys looking at on a daily basis to measure success? Mm, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say like when it comes to us measuring success, as far as the practical side, of course, we're measuring growth of just followers and then also engagement and, you know, like, comments and all of those sorts of things and then also just seeing trends of like where our platforms are headed analytically um mm -hmm. and then I would say this is not necessarily as practical kind of like you said we're not measuring sales or things like that but right. we love to keep track of stories and like testimonies that mm -hmm. we see and what we're getting tagged in or people are messaging to us or commenting on one of our posts about how like they were encouraged at church this week or you know they ended up getting baptized and god's working mm -hmm. in their life and they're feeling encouraged and growing closer to him and so they're you know those kind of not practical types things of measuring yeah, right, right, right. yeah and i assume you're not like sitting there counting like hey we had five positive stories this week or are you doing that no, I mean, we don't necessarily count. Yeah. We definitely do keep track of them the best we can and, you know, like to follow up with all of those and then share them with our team to show like what God's doing and how God is using our social media platforms to get people right. connected, especially in this season of COVID. It's been an incredible tool with so many people just staying at home, but being able to connect with the church online through social media. So. Yeah, definitely. So before I ask about COVID and how you guys have shifted, I want to um, stay on this topic we're on. So as you know, people are sharing their stories with you, um, are they tagging Highlands or are you just finding them um, or are they tagging them? And then if they do tag them, are you resharing those posts or what happens to those posts? Do you guys just kind of take a screen capture of it and keep it internally. What do you guys do with that? Yeah, it's a little bit of both as far as how we receive the stories. Sometimes they will tag us. And like I said, sometimes they will send them via private messages. And then sometimes we'll find them just by using our keyword searches, you know, mm -hmm. Church of Islands, C-O-T-H, which is an abbreviation. Right. So kind of all the above on how we find them and then 
um, the standout stories where we feel like it would help people see themselves in that situation and see like, wow, God did this in this person's life. God can do this in my life. And it Mm -hmm. might help encourage them to take their next step or get in a small group or something like that. We do share a lot of those stories and of course to those people to get the content and get their permission. And then sometimes it is just kept internally as, um, you know, we celebrate with our team and don't share all of them, of course. So, so yeah. Got it. Got it. Well, can you share uh, with our listeners the process of getting that permission? Because I know a lot of listeners, first and foremost, um, are going to be smaller churches that are going to be listening to you to see if there's any value. And you've already provided a lot of value. But how are you getting permission from these people? Are you literally just direct messaging them? What does that process look like uh, to help some of our listeners who might want to start using UGC? For sure. We usually do just private message them sometimes it depends again on like how we got this story right Um, and so if we have the ability to private message them that's what we'll do and sometimes if it's a story we get from a team member at a campus or something then we'll have them ask them for permission or either get their contact info from them and email or call them so it's pretty casual like we just yeah it's it's not that complicated Yeah, sometimes it's like, it takes some research, but. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just wanted people to hear that, you know, it isn't some long legal process that you have to go through in order to have user-generated content that, you know, that you can use on your own profiles. Absolutely, yeah. So you mentioned COVID. I know, obviously, you guys have uh, shifted what you're doing because of COVID. Do you mind sharing me with do you mind sharing with me what the church has done to accommodate uh, around what's happening with COVID? And then do you mind sharing what the social media team has done to also adapt to what's going on? Yeah, for sure. So back in March, of course, when everything kind of exploded and started yeah. going down, we began having church to call on So, Which was um, awesome, by the way. Oh, yeah. We are so thankful that we had the ability to do that. So, and we're already doing that and just we're able to put more resources towards it. Like we actually began streaming on YouTube live in that season, which was something we've been pushing towards for a long time. And, you know, I guess it took um, (laughs) once the global pandemic hit and we needed more online resources, like we were able to push towards that. And so it grew all of our online resources in a huge way and really like that immediately brought a big change for our social media team because we became honestly like one of the only ways people were getting communication from the church besides just our website or emails or texts and so we obviously like kind of just went hyper mode of like how can we keep people connected and let them know like when we're having church and how to join online and and then also like how could we keep people encouraged because it was such a scary time for for everyone really and so uncertain and so we were trying to put out a lot of content to let people know like hey here's how we're doing church but also like hey like there's hope like God's got you and trying to put out lots of encouraging bible verses and resources for people to read and listen to to have healthy content um with a lot of extra time in that season yeah right so then that lasted through we were able to have some in-person services in june and then of course the alabama covid numbers spiked again and we went back to online only for i think it was around a month um that may not be exactly right and then started having in-person services again in august with lots of safety precautions and yep that sort of thing before. so it really our social media engagement grew starting in March and April like <laughs> at some points on some of our platforms it grew by five times which that's completely awesome us. And we actually had to like call on some other staff members whose jobs were kind of different in that season because we weren't having in-person church or events Yep. And they were able to like help us with our engagement and make sure we were responding to everyone who needed to respond and seeing everyone's comments and questions. Um, and so, yeah, it was absolutely like a blessing for our social media team. While it was stressful in a lot of ways, 
it brought so many people to the platforms and it's helped a lot of people get connected who, you know, we believe some of them wouldn't have before right. otherwise. And so thankful for that and trying to build on that, you know, of new yeah. people have followed. No, I can agree with that. How big is y'all's following now across all of the channels? So on Instagram, I think we're at 136,000 right now. And then I think Facebook is a little over that number. I should know the exact number, but I don't want to quote it and be up. And then Twitter is, of course, under that. Um, I think more on like 50,000. I should totally right. know numbers. So all together, close to half a million people. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, you know, kind of the hot topic in social media these days has been TikTok. You know, at one point it was going to get banned in the U.S. and it was like temporarily banned. And then the president gave a pardon. Um, how are you guys thinking about TikTok or is that not even on y'all's radar? Definitely an interesting topic. Um, yeah, right. We, we thought about it, of course, when it started really taking off. Because, you know, when these platforms start, you kind of don't know what direction they're going to take. Right. So um, we want to, like, secure our handle if, in case we ever do want to use it sort of thing. But at this time, we don't feel like it's something that really benefits fits within our vision. Um, so we're not currently using it right now. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. And then last question here. It, um, which platforms are you personally most active on? Um, definitely Instagram is the one that I spend most of my time on. Um, and then Facebook is probably more of like connecting with people who I've met who either live like super far away on like mission right. trips or some of my like older relatives. <laughs> um, so I would say Instagram for sure the most and then Facebook is gotcha. under I've been, I've been spending a lot of my time on LinkedIn. I don't know. How do you feel about LinkedIn? I have actually never gotten super involved on LinkedIn, but I know that's an incredible tool. So maybe yeah. I should look at it. Well, I tried to find you on LinkedIn before our call and for some reason I wasn't able to find you. So definitely, uh, definitely <laughs> check it out. Yeah. Well, Elena, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I'm sure our listeners found a lot of this information valuable and I'm going to be distributing this across all of the major channels. You can listen to it anywhere, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, you name it, it'll be there. Um, and thank you so much again for taking this time out to speak with me. Awesome, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely.